More specs and rumors surrounding NVIDIA's RTX 4060 Ti graphics card have surfaced on the web, and based on the information we already had, and taking into consideration this recent info, I'm afraid this card is just straight up going to be dead on arrival. Let's discuss that in this video. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. It seems like it's been a fairly long time since we got any news pertaining to information surrounding NVIDIA's upcoming graphics cards, specifically cards like the RTX 4070 and 4060 Ti. I don't want to say that people are getting anxious because that's definitely not what's happening here, but it's more so to do with wanting confirmation that this is basically Nvidia saying they're done with the mainstream or mid-level GPU market, and that there are better alternatives out there rather than going after this new trash. Also, before we get into the main topic of this video, I just wanted to touch base on a recent video of mine, particularly the one where I talk about how PC gamers just don't really care about the new hardware that's being released. That video ended up doing really well, I'm quite happy and thankful for the support I got, and all the people who took the time out of their day to watch the video and provide comments on the topic as well. I did read a lot of comments I got on that video, and many people seem to agree on the things I talked about. It really just comes down to these three main issues. The first is the economic climate, right now people just don't have the same sort of purchasing power that they did from a few years ago, therefore they'll be limited on their expenditures of luxury items, graphics cards, PC parts, and tech in general does fall under that category. The second issue is that the new GPUs are priced much higher relative to where the last gen part was. We went over this in more detail in previous videos so I won't repeat the same info again, but bumping up the MSRP by 60 or 70% plus is just not feasible. Even with the inflation taken into consideration, consideration, this is a huge stretch by NVIDIA. The third problem which affects the manufacturers more than it does consumers is that what even warrants the new hardware these days? With a lot of the new games that are coming out, there aren't too many that can't run on older hardware or perform very poorly. I've seen many comments from people stating they are completely content with the hardware they purchased years ago, as it still plays their games at an acceptable performance level and or meets their target while still looking visually satisfactory. This is a topic which I'll be talking about more in depth in a future video which will also involve some hardware benchmarks. Right now they just don't have any incentive to upgrade even if the hardware is faster by over 50%. Because they're happy with what their current hardware is capable of delivering, they're just not interested. You know, that 50% is just a meaningless number at this point. As these manufacturers continue to hype up fidelity features like ray tracing, visual appeal isn't what is on the top of people's priority list. It's is that game fun? Does it have good gameplay? Does it have an interesting story? What about memorable characters? If you deliver in those categories, the game could have 8-bit graphics and it will still sell like hotcakes, and graphics will take a backseat. It's why a platform like the Steam Deck has sold so well because it's capable of running all those types of games and even modern games with appropriate visual settings, and that seems to be the goal for the vast majority of users. Same reason why consoles are still so successful, if people really cared about graphics, Graphics, then everyone would be on a gaming PC with an RTX 4090 playing at 4K, but obviously that's not the case. I want you to think about this for a moment. There are more people today that are using decade-old GPUs than there were when those cards were first released. I still know people today who are running cards like the R9 290 and GTX 970 in their gaming rig. We're talking about GPUs released back in 2013 and 2014 respectively. Now, if you were to go back in time to 2013, how many people do you think were out there using a GeForce FX 5900 Ultra for the gaming rig? Probably little to none, because during that era, people did actually have an incentive to upgrade, and also prices hadn't ballooned to where they are at now. The fact that you still have people comfortably on graphics cards that are 6 plus years old, and that's, trust me, in a tech world that's considered ancient, should tell you a lot about the stagnation in this industry. I'll leave it at that for now, so we'll move on to the next topic for this video, which was the recent rumor surrounding the upcoming RTX 4060 Ti. This article was posted over on Video Cards, and they're sourcing a user Twitter known as T4C Fantasy. Obviously, take the info with a grain of salt, but what's stated here is pretty believable. They mentioned that the RTX 4060 Ti will have a base and boost clock of 2310 MHz and 2535 MHz, respectively, with premium AIB models boosting beyond that to 2685 MHz. 
The reason why this isn't hard to believe, and really anyone who's seen specs of release models on the market will see how these figures are pretty similar. Just like with previous gen cards, these cards using Nvidia's GPU boost tech will boost beyond that, so expect to see even the cheapest RTX 4060 Ti's running north of 2700 MHz out of the box, and with some manual overclocking, they'll probably also reach 3 GHz. Now we've had information that was released earlier this year surrounding the upcoming 4060 Ti, such as how many shaders it will have, and and its memory configuration. Video Cards also puts that information in this chart, and with all of that taken into consideration, we're able to roughly figure out its theoretical peak performance, and it works out to be around 22.1 teraflops. Comparing that number to its previous gen counterpart, the 3060 Ti, that's an increase of 36%, and compared to the 3070, it's just slightly ahead. Now, that's just peak FP32 performance, that doesn't necessarily indicate how it will perform in real world scenarios such as games. The fact that this upcoming 4060 Ti has less shaders than the 3060 Ti has a much slimmer memory bus, we're talking about going from a 256 bit bus down to 128 bit and it will still be using a 8GB memory buffer while probably getting a price jump to around $500 makes this card absolutely horrendous. Don't get me wrong, having 8GB of VRAM is sufficient for gaming at 1080p, and even for most games at 1440p, but it should not cost $500 in 2023. This card should have gotten 12GB minimum, or they need to price it appropriately, which should be like $300 tops given its specifications, and that's being generous. Really, I think it should be $250. Circling back to performance, it's probably going to be sitting in between the 3060 Ti and 3070, but costs the same as the 3070, which is also why this card will be received very poorly. Also, you can go back and take a look at benchmarks, which include the 3060 Ti, and 3070 and you'll find the gap between those two GPUs wasn't even that big to begin with. So this is just a horrible improvement gen on gen. I'm not exactly sure what's Nvidia's rationale here for these GPUs and why they have such obscene pricing. They are really supposed to be meant for the entry level segments but are priced at what previous gen high end offerings were priced at. To me it seems like because they have such a high amount of market share, mind share and dominance, they're taking on the Apple approach where all the other competition is dead to them, and they only consider themselves to be the viable option in the market. Therefore, they can price their cards at whatever they want, regardless of specs, relative previous gen performance, or options from their competitors. It doesn't matter because they know the consumers who are interested in their brand will buy it just like how Apple consumers only buy Apple, or how the quote-unquote normies just want to buy Apple products. I saw this post recently over on the PC Master Race subreddit, and it was a screenshot of a comment from a YouTube comment section. The commenter asked, I'm in the market for a GPU, and I have two I'm looking at. One is a 3050 for $250 with 8GB, and the other is a 6700 XT for $180 with 12GB. Should I go with the AMD card? Now, I'm not sure if this is a troll post or not. I don't know where you can even find 6700 XTs for $180. Maybe it's a used market deal, but regardless, this is the sort of damage Nvidia has done to the market. This shouldn't even be a question to begin with. The RX 6700 XT is miles ahead of an RTX 3050, and the fact that it's cheaper should be a no-brainer. And look, I'm not picking on this user. What I'm trying to show you guys is the sort of mindshare Nvidia has established on the market, where someone new who may not have a lot of knowledge will put themselves in this sort of situation where they'll end up overspending for a card when the alternative had way better price to performance. For the ones who are a bit more informed or have been PC gamers for a while, this ties into what I was talking about earlier in the video. When they see new options like this 4060 Ti and 4070 are going to have abysmal performance relative to last gen with upward trending prices, it's why nobody is interested in the new hardware itself. And I'm glad more and more people are starting to look at things this way rather than being so fixated on, oh my god, look, there's a new GPU coming out and now I feel like my old one is too slow or obsolete and I have to upgrade. At this point, don't even worry about the new stuff that's coming out. If you're happy with the capabilities of your current hardware, then that's all that matters. And sooner or later, these companies will realize that a change will be necessary in the market. If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel, such as using my Amazon affiliate link. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.